Hey folks, I'm best-selling author David McKnight. In today's video, we're going to talk about the five qualities or attributes your LIRP absolutely must have if you're planning on keeping it for the rest of your life. Let's begin by acknowledging that life insurance retirement plans, or LIRPs, are long-term propositions. They only really work if you look at them like a marriage, meaning they work best if it's till death do you part. In other words, don't start an LIRP unless you're planning on dying with your LIRP in force, even if that means keeping it for 40 to 50 years. And if you're planning on keeping your LIRP for 40 or 50 years, you really should have a laundry list of things you're looking for before you ever enter into the transaction. What I'm going to reveal today are five things that your LIRP must have that will save you money, frustration, and heartache years down the road. Yes, I will go so far as to say that some LIRPs have ticking time bombs uh, in them that will go off when you can least afford to have it happen, and that's in retirement. Let's start with the first thing you must insist that your LIRP have. That's a guaranteed 0% loan provision. Remember, one of the things that makes the LIRP so appealing is that you can take the money out tax-free. You do that by way of a loan. Whether you take a loan from your bank, your rich uncle, or your life insurance policy, it's tax-free. Why does the IRS allow this? Because they know you'll be paying the loan back with dollars that have been taxed. And while all life insurance loans are tax-free, they're not all cost free. To understand why, you have to understand how these loans actually work. For starters, you aren't actually taking a loan from your own policy. You're taking the loan from the life insurance company and using your policy's cash value as collateral. So here's how it works. Let's say you ask for a $100,000 loan from the life insurance company. They will cut you a check from their own coffers and charge you a rate of interest, let's call it 3%. You'll then receive that $100,000 check in the mail three to five business days later. In the very same breath, the life insurance company will take $100,000 out of your cash value and put it in what I call a loan collateral account. They'll then credit that account a rate of interest, in this case, we'll say 3%. So at the end of the year, you'll owe $103,000 and you'll have $103,000 in your loan collateral account. And those two things cancel each other out that's what we call a zero cost or a wash loan. So all you know is that you asked for $100,000, you got $100,000, your cash value went down by $100,000, and you didn't have to pay tax or interest on it along the way. But this is where life insurance companies can really get you. Some companies say that their current practice is to charge you 3% interest, but they reserve the right to charge you four, five, or eight at their leisure sometime down the road. So if they're crediting you back three that means that they could charge your net cost of borrowing to one, two, or five percent at any point. If you give a life insurance company 30 years to make up their mind on what interest rate they're going to charge you, that's like having their fox in your chicken coop. Take a look at the following chart to appreciate the dangers of not having a guaranteed 0% loan. Let's say you got a million bucks of cash value and you want to take a $75,000 loan per year and you have a 2% net cost to borrow. That means the first year you'll owe $1,500. And if you don't pay it back at the end of the first year, they'll take it out of your cash value. The second year you take another loan, but you haven't paid back the loan for the first year, so they'll charge you $3,000 this year. And as each year passes and you take more and more loans, that interest begins to compound and snowball to the point where you bankrupt your policy in the 19th year at a cost of $825,000. A 1% loan provision isn't much better. You bankrupt your policy in the 23rd year at a cost of $525,000. With a guaranteed 0% loan, there is no net cost to borrow and you take out the full $2,250,000 and your money lasts the full 30 years. I don't think I'm exaggerating when I say that your loan provision is the single most important provision in the entire contract. Now, even if the insurance company has a guaranteed 0% loan provision, there's still another way they can get you. You see, there's two ways in which they can configure these loans. They can either charge you interest in advance or interest in arrears. 
Let's start with the less desirable of the two, interest in advance. With interest in advance, the insurance company charges you the interest rate at the beginning of the year in which you request the loan. For example, let's say they're charging you 3% on a $100,000 loan. So you'd owe them that 3% at the beginning of the year in which you take the loan. They'll actually subtract it from your cash value. Because you have to give it to them at the beginning of the year as opposed to the end of the year, you lose out on what that money could have earned for you had you been able to keep it inside your growth account and compound it over the course of that year. That may not seem like a big deal over a single year, but if you do that each and every year and amortize that inefficiency out over the life of the contract, then that can be a huge drag on your cash value. That could end up costing you a couple hundred thousand dollars over the life of the program. Now, Here's the surprising thing. You may in fact have a guaranteed 0% loan, but if your company charges interest in advance, then that's the equivalent of adding four tenths of 1% to your loan provision. So what appeared to be a guaranteed 0% loan provision at the outset turns into an effective four tenths of 1% loan, not optimal. With interest in arrears, they charge you interest at the end of the year, so you don't experience the same issues with opportunity costs. You simply pay the interest at the end of the year and experience the growth on that money over the course of the entire year. If you're going to be keeping your LIRP for 40 or 50 years, you must insist on having an LIRP that charges interest in arrears. As an asterisk to this discussion, there is a company out there, which I quite like, that does charge interest in advance, but what they credit your loan collateral account is a number that's greater than what they charge you for the loan. So in theory, if a company credits, say, 4% to your loan collateral account, and they charge you 3% for the loan in advance, then the net cost of borrowing can be even better than 0%. It's almost as if they were paying you to take the loan. Okay, folks, it's time for the power of zero question of the day. What do you think is the most important provision in the LIRP contract? Go ahead and put your answers in the comments section below. The third thing you must insist that your LIRP have is daily sweeps. Okay, what's a sweep? And what does it have to do with your LIRP? Well, when you contribute money to an LIRP known as Index Universal Life, which is the LIRP I prefer, the insurance company doesn't treat that premium like a normal investment might get treated. With a normal investment, you contribute your money and with, within 24 hours, typically, it gets contributed to your actual investment account. LIRPs work differently. When you submit your premium to the insurance company, it gets deposited into an account where it earns a nominal rate of interest. So that money won't actually go to work for you until the insurance company sweeps it out of that nominal interest rate account and into the growth account. Why can't they just do this right away, you might ask? Why? Why can't they put that money to work immediately? Well, in order to give you the upside of the market up to a cap and guarantee that you won't ever lose money, these companies have to use a strategy that involves options. Now, these options aren't cheap, particularly if you're buying options on just a few assets at a time. As a rule, the larger the pool of money you're buying an option for, the cheaper those options become. It's economies of scale. It's like going to Costco and buying in bulk. The more you buy, the cheaper it becomes. So a lot of smaller companies can't just sweep your money into those option accounts right away because the cost of options on this smaller pool of assets would be far too expensive. They actually have to pool these assets over a period of time, let them accumulate to a certain threshold, and then sweep them into that growth account all at once. Here's the problem. Some companies are so small that they have to wait anywhere from three to six months to pull up enough assets to where it's cost effective enough to purchase the options required to make those assets grow. So what's the problem with this approach? Well, it once again comes down to opportunity cost. If every time you make a contribution to your LIRP, your premium sits around languishing at a nominal interest rate for three to six months before getting swept into that investment account, then there's an opportunity cost associated with that. 
you're missing out on the growth on that money for three to six months. And if you amortize the inefficiency out over the life of your LIRP, which in some cases could be 50 years or longer, then that can have a huge drag on your cash value over time. Now, there are some companies out there that have daily or weekly sweeps. Now, daily is optimal, but weekly sweeps are also acceptable. That means that the minute you make your contribution, that money goes right to work for you either that day or within a week. So no opportunity costs, no having your money languish in an account earning next to nothing, and no drag on your cash value over time. The fourth thing you must insist that your LIRP have is an overloan protection rider. Remember, through a mismanagement of loans, policy underfunding, fees, or poor performance, your contract could run out of cash value. And guess what? If you run out of money in your cash value before you die, all the tax savings you experienced over the life of the policy to that point all come due all in one year. That's right. You'll receive a massive tax bill from the IRS in the year your policy runs out of cash. That's not a happy day for any LIRP policyholder. So to forestall this outcome, you must insist that your policy have an overloan protection rider. This means that when your cash value drops to a certain point, the insurance company will give you the option of essentially taking over the policy. They will reduce your policy's death benefit to the point where the remaining cash value essentially pays the policy up and they'll forbid you from withdrawing any more cash. And whatever death benefit remains is what gets passed on to your heirs. And while this does prevent you from being able to take out any more loans, it protects you from having to receive that devastating tax bill from the IRS. So you must insist that your LIRP have this important feature. The last thing your LIRP must have is a chronic illness rider. With a chronic illness rider, the insurance company gives you the ability to receive your death benefit in advance of your death for the purpose of paying for long-term care. Here's an example. Let's say you have a death benefit of $400,000. You wake up one day and you can no longer feed yourself, bathe yourself, transfer yourself, what have you. You can find one doctor to find one letter to that effect. The insurance company will send you 25% of your death benefit per year, or in this case, $100,000 per year, every year for four years for the purpose of paying for long-term care. Now, they may discount that $100,000 based on the age in which you receive the benefit, but the point is this, they're willing to give you your death benefit while you're alive for the purpose of paying for long-term care. And should you die peaceful in your sleep 30 years from now, never having needed long-term care, guess what? Someone's still getting a death benefit, probably your kids or your grandkids. So there isn't that sensation of having paid for something you hope you never have to use. Today, we've discussed just five things that your LIRP must have if you're planning on keeping it until death till you part. If you wanna see the full list of things your LIRP absolutely must have, check out my best-selling book, Look Before You Lerp over on Amazon. Whatever you do, do not enter into an LIRP without having read that book. If you wanna find out if your LIRP has all five of these features and more, head over to davidmcknight.com. We're happy to give you a complimentary review. Don't forget to click like, subscribe, and the bell so you never miss a video. And feel free to make uh, any comments or ask any questions in the comments section below. This is David McKnight. I look forward to seeing you on the next video.